With Beyond Light just around the corner, now will be a great time for players to be prepared for whatever comes their way, including the new raids, and what better way to do so by using a fantastic endgame build for those who like to take on new challenges, but would also like to be a massive team player. I would like to introduce you all to the following Saint 14 War My Cells build that will allow you to freely buff and debuff anyone within your vicinity, and is rather simple to set up, to the point of allowing users the option to change the mods without it deviating away from the origin of the build. One thing I have noticed with a few builds though, is that a lot of content creators create the standard Saint 14 and bubble build, with meta weapons of course, but never adding the ability to use Warmind cells as well, just the same old. Now, nothing's wrong with that, but instead of following the crowd, why not take our own route around the build? So, I've decided to do my own take on it, and show you why you should make your own version with Warmind cells, and generally how where it pairs really well with said build. So before we head off, if you like the content and would like to support the channel, do be sure to subscribe for more content like this, and be sure to leave a comment in the comment section for anything you would like me to cover in the future. The more support we get, the more interesting and fun videos we can go ahead and produce. Starting off with the subclass, we will be maining the Coda the Protector subclass for the overall usage of World of Dawn, but also for the melee incidental perks that are heavily team oriented. Now when it comes down to large scale team support, you will either go with a Warlock with Well, or the Titans with Wall of Dawn, and if you go with Wall of Dawn, you're going to get quite a lot of benefits such as free health regen upon melee kills for you and your team, and the ability to get your overshield as well for you and your allies, thanks to the defensive strike perk. Since you're going to be using your melee quite a bit anyways, this will allow you to constantly provide supportive help to your team as long as they are close and pretty much make your whole team a walking tank in the literal process. And all of this is coming from two perks that can be further enhanced via the strength mods or the heavy handed mod, which pairs extremely well with the Warmind Cell loadout. We haven't even touched the Wall of Dawn in the process yet, but this simple setup already with the subclass proves just how powerful the build can be without the use of Wall of Dawn in action. With Ward now, you're getting a 35% weapon buff to all those who pass by the super, a overshield, a indestructible shield you can dip in and out of, and if you're using the Sim 14's helm, a permanent blinding effect that affects all those that enter the bubble, which is a godsend for landing on a boss and then wailing into them. This subclass on its own is very powerful and is very much used for end game for precisely the above reasons. It's also new player friendly and easy to learn, allowing you the option to play more safe than sorry when advancing through the game. Plus, you also have the option to just use your sentinel shield if you don't want to either. So basically two supers in one with a ton of benefits which is something definitely worth investing in. For your grenades, your options are very open as all three choices are pretty viable. I'm going to be using the Void Wall Grenade for its coverage and duration, but this special grenade is also great for locking areas down. For the weapons, it's a doozy. You're going to need a weapon that can produce a warm and cells on the fly, and fortunately there are a few you can get now before the end of the season. Unfortunately, they might not be as strong as you hope, but we have alternatives. Within my primary, I'm going to be using the 7th Seraph Carbine with Vampage and Slide Shot, a decent 450 AR that's untamable to get at the moment as it was only released last season. This AR hits decently hard and has great range, and stats, and perks that are complemented very well. Although not the best in both PvP to PvE content, what makes the rifle so unique is the option for it to create all my cells, and it's because of that that I'm surprised many people never picked one up as a backup weapon to use, just for the mods. Now, its average but good stats and decent range allows you to take out enemies at a safe distance, while also allowing you to prop all my cells freely, compared to using the other serif type weapons available. In fact, the ability to proc cells at a much longer and safer distance makes it very viable for end game survival, with the Akilos 2.0 sniper coming at a close second. All the other war mine made weapons are good but are more focused for CQC engagements, which works out really well for our super and abilities. But if you plan on taking this to end game, then you're going to need to rethink your loadout. In secondary, we have the 7th Sev SI2 sidearm with demolitions and snapshot sights. The role I have is more suited for PvP with the way the pucks are created, but its usage in PvE is still viable, just not as viable compared to using a full auto and full ball version. Now, the only practical good thing about the role I have is the usage of demolitionists, which can be paired with oppressive darkness, but that's really it. Its stats are great, but its damage is subpar against the tougher adds, which is why I've opted into using my Aikilos 2.0 SMG that rolled with both Disruption Break and Demo in 1. 
Although his damage is much lower than my sidearm, it can make that up easily with the Destruction Break perk for a 50% kinetic damage boost or just use it for more grenades. I don't plan on using my secondary as my primary in game, but more of a quick switch when I can't reload my primary or if I need to create warm myself quickly. You can get the Aquilos 2.0 SMG for the recaster, but at the current moment with the season being so close at the moment, I don't think you'll have enough time to grab it, but maybe next season the option will be made available. For Heavy, I've chosen to use the Falling Guillotine with Tireless Blade and Whirlwind Blade. This is the most current and consistent sword to use when using with this type of build, because of the method of utilising Wall of Dawn. Just this sword with Ward will allow you to pretty much demolish 90% of bosses in game, plus with the effect of Saint 14's Helm in play, anyone that decides to get in close and try to disrupt you will ultimately get blinded in the process. At the same time, I'll also be using the Xena Phage for long distance bosses that I can't close the gap on for X amount of time or reasons. For the stats, we want to focus our energy into the intellect area as best as we can, so that we can actually gain back our super within a few minutes of play. Remember, our plan is to utilize super as much as we can when using an end game, as we want to end bosses quickly, but also have the option available if our team is in dire need to help. A good and recommended amount to have would be 80 for a 4 minute cooldown. However, if you can hit 90 or 100, then that would be also beneficial as well. You also want to make sure your resilience and recovery is at a respectable level, like always, such as max 50 for resilience and 50 and above for recovery. The only reason why my resilience is in the 70 is because of my armor pieces and the stat distribution they provide. I recommend you don't go over 50 unless for a specific build around that area in mind. Lastly, there's also a grenade stat which is at 40 for a 1 minute 8 second cooldown and I don't plan on increasing this any more further as I have the demolitions perk to aid me. I recommend you do the same as the amount you get back from the perk is more than enough to keep you stocked and ready to go. Next for the armor, like always you will need this season and last season armor pieces for the mixture of mods we are going for. You're going to need a mixture of all 3 elemental affinity armors for the warmind cells of your choosing. But in most cases, you're going to need Solar and then the Void piece for the Oppressive Darkness mod. Once again, if you have the Season Pass, the armor provided are the best ones to work with as they come with a high stat and 6 free armor slots for you to work with, with each one being fully customizable to your preferred choice of affinities. At Exotics, as mentioned, we will be working with the Helm of Synth 14 with no specific affinity required unless you want it for a specific weapon type in mind. Now that we covered all that, here are the mods we are going to be currently using. Head, Discipline and Heavy Ammo Finder mod. Arm, Intellect, Auto Rifle Loader and Burning Cells mod. Chest, Intellect, Breach Resonator and Fire Team Medic mod. Leg, Recovery, Enhanced Sword Scavenger times 2 and Celia Suppression mod. Mark, Cookers of Damner, Oppressive Darkness, Bomber and Global Reach mod. The build now will be really useful for endgame content in mind from raids, nightfalls and dungeons etc. And anything I've added has been added to allow the user to really up their support game in different activities. Now you have the basics such as the Wall of Dawn, Abilities and St. Fulton Helm for the extra blinding effect, but we've now added in the benefit of Warmind Cells to 8 and the benefit of the cells with the build will honestly help you out in a long way. My cells combo I'm using is the Cellular Suppression mod for suppression large groups bads, Burning Cells mod for the extra burn tick damage upon detonation, and the Fire Team Medic for a wide scale healing effect for all. With all this combined, I can provide a overshield to all my teammates via the Defensive Strike perk, Quick Health Regen via the Valiant Force and Fire Team Medic mod, a 35% weapon buff, large scale debuff from Helm of Sin 14, Oppressive Darkness, and Cellular Suppression mod. And lastly, large scale damage that can wipe out groups of ads in a flash upon the detonation of your cells. At this point, I don't think this build can get any more powerful. And yeah, I have a feeling it actually can. The Warmind cells can be switched easily for more supportive or offensive roles you have in mind. And even then, just using the cells on their own is more than enough for you to be a vital player in your team. It's very odd that not many players have opted in to utilize these mods for end game as the lethality plus supportive role is the best thing that many players have gotten in a while, like honestly do not sleep on these. Now of course I can understand those that don't have the mod and can't really utilize this and need to rely on the current meta or weapon to succeed, and to be honest, using the most common and easy accessible loadouts is probably the best thing to do 
when it's being aimed at new and old players, as they can customize it further to their liking. The same can be said for this build as well without the mods, as just the subclass on its own is more than enough to sustain a large group. I believe at the end of the day, whatever mods and weapons you have for the build should be more than enough to warrant, whether it's meta or not. Now of course there is one issue with the build and that will come in the form of both your primary and secondary weapon in use. Like I mentioned earlier, getting their key loss 2.0 or say a weapon is easily achievable via the recaster until that's gone. But not many of you here will have the primary that I have to produce all my cells. And unfortunately you can't get the Seraph Carbine anymore. Now this may weaken the build overall if you're not a fan of using the available Seraph and key loss weapons. But there is a fix on this, and that is for you to use the Wrath or Rasputin mod that can make any cell weapons that produce cell slash damage to produce cells as well. Now, weapons with Firefly or weapons that are solar with the Firefly Extinction perk built into it, aka the Sunshot, will be a major help for you if you do not have that. But at the same time, if you do not have this mod, then you're going to need to look out for Banshee who will eventually sell it. So overall, a new and old players, this build here is an expansion to the current build that many of you are familiar with. The load that I have is more customizable for allowing you to support in many different ways, and even if you don't have the setup I have as shown, whatever you have will still be viable, you just need to fill in the blanks from there. So if you enjoyed the video then by all means do leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by guys, and I'll see you all in the next one.